What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you my modded Leatherman collection. Uh, just my whole Leatherman collection in general. And um, before I start, I just wanted to say that I apologize for not uploading as much. I, of course, want to upload consistently, but stuff happens. And also, um, with this specifically, I only started modding a lot in the past month or two, and I wanted to make sure I had all the mods done before I show them this video. So I do have all my stuff in a vault secure case, which is a pretty cool product that I also got recently. Um, I have, so these, these two are stock, the Crunch and the Skeletal CX are stock. And then I have this one, which I will get to in a second. Um, case is pretty cool. This is the secure one, so it's a little larger. It has two of these folds here. Plus it'll lock on the front and it has a disassembly tray on the back. Um, I originally, I, I got one of these and then I also got like the smaller version, but then I exchanged it because I realized I didn't have two of these. So um, you have to kind of like, if you wanted to put it the other way, these would scratch the tools down here. So you, now you can have two panels and have something in the middle. I'm still trying to configure it. Uh, I, got a, I got a few extra of these panels as well, but the larger items. But anyway, these uh, down here are all modded and I will go through them, I guess one by one. Um, so this is just, this is the Leatherman Wave, which I just, what I did was I took a stainless steel wave and a black oxide wave and I basically combined the parts. Um, I just try to do like, everything opposite basically on either side um so you got the black handle stainless blade black screw you know black screw here all that stuff and the black pocket clip so everything is stock on here on the outside it does look pretty cool and then when you open it you have black pliers with the silver wire cutters the black screw and those are like pretty loose which is odd considering they're black oxide so i thought i'm gonna kind of have more of a break-in period but um and the tools here on, on this side since it's a silver handle i have obviously the black tools um on this side i so i always wanted an all in a little in wave because i feel like the micro driver should be replaced for one um so what i did i got the scissors i got a rebar all and then i have what i did to the flat driver was I made it into like a combo driver basically. So I have a dedicated implement that can do flatheads and like number two Phillip. So I like tapered it and then kind of uh, put the edge down a little bit. So you, it's also a little easier to price stuff with this if you want, but it's pretty, pretty small. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I did with that. I made a couple of those, like, tools. That was my second attempt at it, of the combo driver tool. Um, I may switch it out in the future, but that's what actually fits here uh, without any modification. I, I initially thought I had to modify, like, the thickness, and I tried that, and then it was too loose. But, uh, yeah, that's the wave. And then what I did with the other side of the black oxide wave was I com combined it with the signal here. And um, the signal, so once you take, you know, take half of it off, because I want to keep the half that had the hammer, because that's a very unique tool, the signal. Um, so you, you basically get your own, like, standalone knife, because it keeps the pocket clip, it keeps the blade, and it keeps a couple tools here. So you got the one-hand blade, the pocket clip, and then uh, I don't think anything else will fit in place of the all here, uh, just because of the way this is designed. Um, and then these are also just what normal comes in. What's cool about this is that the bit driver becomes in line. It's very, very comfortable to use like an actual normal screwdriver as opposed to when it's on the signal and you can't really like, uh, you have to like, kind of use it in a 90 degree shape. And then this here is a 3D printed bit holder from Metro Q on Shapeways. Uh, it's basically these two 3D printed plastic pieces um, that replace the fire starter and the diamond sharpener. This one just holds, I have a Torx bit here and you can just 
just slide right in right there. And then the way the one on the signal works is you, so what's cool, like obviously this doesn't rattle around like the stock, the stock uh, ferro rod thing, which is cool. But uh, when you put the, you, what you do is you take it out and then you slide the bit in here and then it's supposed to be loose. So you can kind of hear it rattling, which I don't like, but then you'd tilt it down and it would just come out like that. So that's, uh, I also like how it looks better. It's like black and silver instead of the yellow accents. It's like a totally different tool with the yellow yellow outer tools. Um, so kind of the same thing on this one. The black handle, silver knife, diamond file. And then I kept the saw. I was originally thinking about putting wingman scissors in here, but I'm not sure how good those are. That would be worth it. What's cool is also this will still lock. It'll still lock close. Uh, it doesn't that doesn't really matter too much though because this doesn't like ballast on open the way a normal signal does um and then here i put a little piece of paracord which is this inner strand of paracord which i learned from max level edc to basically be able to use this with quarter inch bits it'll retain the bit otherwise when you put it in stock it will just the bit will just fall out because it's meant to be more of a wrench than a bit driver um then the plastic, or what's it called? The pocket clip is a silver, silver on black. And then I also did black and silver wire cutters. Um, and then the inner tools here that would fit that I have here. Uh, I have a micro driver and a large bit driver. Um, I guess originally I was making this my tool that I would use while modding stuff uh, because I could use like security torques with this to open you know, wave style tools, screws. And then here I could use bit driver and store an extra bit here. And then this I would, I actually use to like, you like stick it through like the, the hole when you're putting tools in and kind of swirl it around to align everything. Um, honestly though, I'm not really too happy with the tool set on this. I feel like it's kind of redundant and um, compared to other tools I have. Uh, so I might sell this, um, this one, I was trying to put scissors here, which I thought worked, but then once I put them in, I realized that they didn't lock. Like, it did lock, but like, it was, you kind of like move them back and forth, so I didn't really like that. Um, this is like, it's kind of cool, you can just, you know, you get like the th really, really thick signal blade. But, yeah, I'm just not sure about keeping this one. Probably gonna sell it. Uh, next, we have the free P4 and P2. Um, I actually really like how these came out. I, I modded these mainly with um, the 3D printed parts from Zap Wizard on Shapeways. Uh, he made some pretty cool stuff. And I also used Max Level EDC again, his his idea for how to shape the tools here. I also, this also was inspired by Max Level EDC. He's like who I go to for all my modding stuff. So first, I guess we'll look at the P2. The P2 has... I kept these three implements on it. So this is stock, the all, because it has this nice screwdriver. The file, I tried to kind of make into an all, like a pointy tip, but I couldn't get an edge on the side. So I'm not sure how good it would be at drilling. And then with the flathead, I uh, made it more, uh, I shortened it so it's more stout, for like, like prying. But you can still use it as a flathead and you can still use it as a package opener because I kept that edge. Um, when I first tried it, I went a little too far and I like took the edge off the side and it was too short and too um, like thin to be a flathead. So that was my second try, it worked a lot better. Then I have the the bit driver here from Zap Wizard. And I thought it was gonna be a quarter inch bit holder, but it's not, it's more of a wrench. You can't hold bits in it. So I was trying to figure out a way to retain the bits. I tried the paracord thing, but then when you close it, it'll like hit uh, the blade. So it becomes really tight. And then lastly, I have a scalpel blade holder on here. And this is a 60A, Havilon 60A blade. Uh, I use ones with the pointed tip, but um, this can come up here and you can poke yourself. So you can also use 70A, which have a blunt tip. I don't really ever 
cut myself like this, so it doesn't matter to me, and I think having a pointed tip is much more useful. Um, I will say, uh, this is not the fault of Zap Wizard, but Shapeways, when they, they made this stuff, uh, there was some, they, you know, some issues with the manufacturing. Like, I had to grind the slot back here deeper so it would lock, because before it actually wouldn't lock. And then I had to widen this um, slot for the blade, because the blades were not going in. Uh, then also, lastly, I put the scissors. I actually, another max level EDC idea, I just like kind of tapered the tip, so it comes to a finer point. Other than that, it's, it's stock, but I actually, I like this a lot, and I also like, I, I hated the combo blade that came with this, so that's why I want to use the scalpel blade. You can also take out the blade, and then like, you know, if you want to go, like, fly or whatever you can't bring a blade and then you can take that out and then buy blades at your destination but what's cool is it makes it very streamlined so you know i can just put it down like that i'm working on it um as opposed to you know when you have the blade it's obviously here so you know what, which side it is but it's kind of annoying when you're kind of it won't it won't sit straight it'll like be slanted um so on the p4 i kept the main blade and then I got the bid driver too. And then the scissors, I also did the same thing with the uh, tip. I uh, kept the serrated blade. I kind of make the tip a little more pointy for like drilling. Um, and then same thing with the flathead. And then here, I tried to make this into more of an awl because that the other tool, you already have the pointed file. So I tried to, I don't have one of those on here. So, uh, I see how this works out. I still have a non-modified one extra, so if I wanted to switch it out, I could. But yeah, that's what I did here. And then lastly, I put the Zap Wizard T-Shank adapter. Um, so I had to, you know, cut down. I use a bell sander from all the reshaping things. I use a bell sander for a Harbor Freight one by thirty bell sander with the one twenty grit belt. Um, other than this, I use an eighty grit for this. But yeah, cut down like a surge file, put it in here. So I have a diamond file and then the crosscut file. Because the file that comes with the, the free series is pretty, pretty bad. Um, and then I had to tap um, to like the threads here, drill the tap the threads. I've never done that before. And then put these very small screws in, which use a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Um, some issues here where it was like touching the plier head, but I kind of like you know, bent it around and it works. Um, you can see like the file was kind of scratched the plier head. Um, that's whatever. Uh, so I do, you know, you lose a saw there, but obviously you can swap a saw in and out. Um, however, I feel like if you didn't want to do that, I mean, you could put, just switch the saw here for the serrated blade or put the serrated blade maybe in place of the plane blade. You can have that streamlined uh, look but it's all up to like you know how much because I always my thought process is you know you can always switch a saw in for the, the diamond file but you can't switch a serrated blade in so yeah that's why, that's why I'm keeping it for right now however I would say with a saw I would say keep the file like this right you obviously have to you have to um file it down so it would fit in the frame and then when you open it you don't want to go too far because then you know, it will here. It's meant when you open the pliers, they're meant to like not. Uh, the tools are meant to open when the pliers are open. But with a saw, I would recommend not cutting it down when you put it in. Like you just put it in and like do what you need to do, and then like swap it back out because you know once you shorten the saw, you have much much less cutting power. So, yeah. And then lastly, this I just did recently. This is a leather and bond. I'm also not sure if I'm going to keep this one. Um, I did want to combine a bond and a curl, so you have the one hand outside accessible locking blade, but uh, I don't have a curl anymore. But um, on the bond, I wanted to make this a knifeless tool, but uh, I, I just didn't like the tool layout that I was copying. I was copying from a guy on Reddit. Um, his name is Court Nedge 22 or something like that. But uh, he, I was copying his layout but essentially what I did, I put, uh, let's see. 
scissors. So I'll put scissors and a file. I, I don't remember. I don't, I, I think this does come with a file. So but, uh, I have scissors, two flatheads, and then all in the file. Uh, this tapered flathead is kind of what I base my combo driver thing off of. And then here I have can opener, bit driver, saw, and then the serrated blade from the rebar because it's a sheep's foot blade, so you don't have to worry about the, the bond blade issue because it is a thing. It actually, this is pretty stupid how it will just stay up like that. Um, you could also grind the, the straight blade into um, a sheep's foot style blade. That's what Max Level EDC did. Um, I don't really care about doing that. For the, honestly, because I want it to be knifeless, but um, the way the other guy had it, he had uh, the micro driver. And I figured that the, I think the can opener would be more useful. But then, if I don't have anything here, you have to use like the lanyard hole as a replacement. And it's like, you know, such a useless tool. And the saw being right here, it's just like kind of, it just looks weird and feels weird. So I'm not sure about this one. Default bond plier head. I did, I tr initially tried to do a rebar plier head swap, but I could not get it to fit at all. So I gave up and I had to just do it on another bond. And then obviously I have the free pocket clip. So yeah, unsure about this one. Uh, this is, I'm not keeping this. I got, I literally bought this just to get that other flathead and the all because it's cheaper than buying the parts. But um, this is another mod I did. This is another Max Level EDC mod. You can basically like sand these all to kind of a 90 degree angle and then it will fit the movable bit driver. So that is also useful. But I, I actually like really hate how bits work with this. I mean, you could use quarter inch bits, you can't use leather bits and all that stuff with it, but like, it's just like, it just feels awful. And it just, they always shake around. You sometimes need another pair of pliers just to take the bit out. So yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of this. Obviously I'm gonna sell it. Um, I will say with the scalpel blade, you kind of need pliers to install the blade. It's pretty dangerous. I, I ended up, uh, I snapped a lot of blades uh, when I was first installing this because the slots weren't thick enough, but like they would always, they always snap right here. It's kind of difficult to take them out. You can't really do it with your hand, like utility blade. Um, so maybe you would need an extra blade. Oh, that actually reminds me. I have two, two more modern Leatherman here. Um, this is actually the first one I ever modded. It's a Micra. And all I did, this is a Mizilch on YouTube mod. Uh, I just took it apart and then put all the handle tools into one handle so you got um basically everything except for the scissors here all right so yeah there you go tweezer knife screwdrivers everything which is pretty cool i mean considering how tiny it is and you also would you just put the uh the key ring on the outside here uh, obviously, I couldn't do any of this without the, the Loki. I can't find them right now, but the parser wrenches, Loki mobile parser wrenches for the Leatherman proprietary bits. This is a style PS. Uh, all I did to this one, I tried to like taper the uh, pliers on making more like needle nose. I don't actually know if this changed anything. And it's a bit uneven. So, I don't know, that was probably stupid, but... Um, I, I, I did get this 3D printed piece from a guy on eBay. Um, God, I forgot his name. But if you look up like Leatherman style uh, 3D printed bit holder or something on eBay, you get this thing and you get two very small screws with it. And then you just slide it into here and then you screw it in and then it, then it can hold um, Leatherman flat bits. So you would just slide it right in there and, and it holds it. It's a, it holds it much more securely than if you just were to slide it in with and use it the carabiner. Because you can do that, but yeah, and then you can also like very, very, very light hammering like thumbtacks or something, he said. But um yeah, so that's what I have. This one, obviously I got the PS because it's knifeless, so you can bring it wherever. Um 
yeah so that's all my tools uh the reason i haven't modded this i don't think there's anything you can really do to a crunch honestly and it's pretty very cool tool like i mean as a locking plier multi-tool it's pretty very unique especially in this size but i don't think there's anything you can really do here i'm not sure what tools will fit inside i'm sure you can mod it but i don't i didn't really see a point to modding this and i also bought it like right when um there everyone was thinking the crunch was going to be discontinued so uh I, I do think it's a really really good on its own though it's not like like the free series very lackluster tools out of the box so i immediately like i bought it just to mod it because like I, there's no way i was going to use that you know the thing stock with like six different flatheads for no reason um and then the skeletal I, you can you can buy from Metro Q the um, hammer thing. So you can take like a few. You can put it. You can like you just put it in here and you screw it in, and then you get it's kind of like this. Like it's kind of like the you get this. You can get a straight uh, inline flat bit holder. You can get like a little pry bar. It's a it's made out of metal, so you can you can kind of hammer stuff with it. You can, um, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with it. But like I I don't I didn't really see it being worth it. Like, uh, I don't even know if I'll keep this, to be honest. Um, and you could also taper these down to make them more of a fine, a fine needle nose plier. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the skeletal. I do like how light it is. Um, because most of these tools here are actually pretty heavy. Especially, um, after I put in the mods for some of them. Like, I put in the mods in the free P4 and got heavier. Uh, but yeah, I mean... It's, as far as the collection goes, I have Swiss Army Knives, there's a couple of classic SDs, Mini Champ, Squirt PS4, which is unmodded, Compact, Climber, Gerber Private X, then I got three knives. Uh, you've seen these before, Bug Out, Mini Osborne, and this is uh, actually really cool, I got it recently. The Civivi Knox, first frame lock Civivi, I think it's actually a really cool knife. Um, nitro v steel but i've never had a frame lock before it feels really nice and the, the, the handles are steel so yeah um as for future mods uh, i i'm pretty new to modding like i don't know oh, i kind of wanted to mod a swiss army knife uh, you can actually have them switch tools out if you send a tenant for warranty but definitely a lot more difficult to do that than um like leatherman tools uh, cause I've only been doing like, just like, you know, swapping out, like dropping in tools or maybe reshaping some, but I haven't done anything crazy. Like, you know, like putting Victorinox scissors on a wave or something like you do a lot of drilling with that. But, uh, I would like to do like a heavy duty mod. Like I, I had a super tool D hunter, I had a surge and then I, I sold both of them. But if I did like a combo of those, I could have like, a, cause I, all, all these tools are like the smaller frame size. I don't have any you know surge size tools so if i did then maybe i could get, make one that's like kinda has both of those where it has like the surge scissors and um like t-shank adapter and then the the super tool 300 like really long drivers so yep uh that is all for my collection right now but yeah so thank you for watching if you want to get into this it's a it's pretty cool it's very satisfying um, there are, like, I forgot to mention, actually, like, there's some things, uh, you have to also, like, very small things, like, you, you have to just figure out, uh, like, luckily, Zap Wizard made, like, a whole thing in CAD where it showed, like, the exact thickness of everything, but even then, like, here, you can see this is what it's supposed to look like, right, the little, like, plastic piece that holds underneath the magnet, this, you know, clears it, but on this side, it just... It wouldn't clear it and like it's supposed to line up with the springs right here on either side the spring arms this one didn't so i had to like cut the, a piece of the half of it off and then sand down or file down the top until this cleared it so now it'll stay and then you know this won't go back and forth um there's small things like that you have to figure out 
but uh, and also what's cool though if you know you take a tool apart and you can get a lot of leathermans used on ebay or just just pre-owned uh, not pre-owned like new but like for cheaper um you can sell all the excess parts a lot because parts are very you know you buy them a lot on ebay and sometimes the parts are worth more it's worth more than if you would sell the whole tool by like on its own you make more selling the parts individually it may take longer but it still make like makes more money like uh uh, also with buying it right so if i wanted wingman scissors some guy was selling it's like has it been over 40 dollars for just the scissors whereas you can buy a whole wingman with all the tools for 40 bucks um yeah just so be, be aware of that you do need you know two of every bit and i uh like this takes two like t9 or like t8 i could use both on it um two like t10 security to hold on one side and turn the other because they're chicago style screws um and then you know you also have to have those low-key mobile wrenches for everything else it's like a uh rebar or whatever well i definitely definitely recommend our pair of tweezers like this these are uh actually like eyelash tweezers like fake eyelash tweezers um extremely extremely sharp point very very good for picking up the small washers um in here so like in between the tools they'll have washers like this like they'll look like this um there's like thicker washers but they also like they, they have phosphor bronze washers which are in between like the usually the blades the outer opening blades and things or between pliers and then you have these small steel like spacer washers yeah, so I have crushed some of these and lost some of them. But you definitely need something like this to pick them up and put them inside. Uh, especially when you're lining everything up. I would also recommend, like, if you have... This is probably not the best version of it, but, like, something similar. Like, if you, you know, for instance, you're, like, lining tools up, right? And you, so you gotta put... Say you wanna put these two next to each other inside the tool. You know, you would uh, take... Let's see... Like, and then you want to have a walk because some you know some require one or even two washers in between oh i'm trying to there you go so say you want to have one washer a tool one washer and then another tool right so right now they're together so you could actually like put it in the tool uh say you put it in the handle right and then you let's see i have a uh let's see if this works i don't think this will this actually will fit in this kind of handle but just for a demonstration you put it through right and then you can stick this through like it'll kind of like straighten everything out this is not the, i don't think this is the right thickness as you can see like the wood is coming out do that and then you can put the shoulder screw in actually um or like what i was doing with that like micro driver is talking about if the washers are not aligned you can just go like this and like kind of align it um another thing i will say about uh when you're especially with tools like this so uh it's the wave handle right so here these pivots they're all chicago style screws but these are not uh, these, these are not d-shaped screws on the signal actually they're very easy to undo and they're i don't know why it's just so much easier like to put stuff on and screw it in it's just completely round these don't they aren't they are round, but they kind of like, they're a bit weird. Like you kind of like turn them some ways. And then obviously you figure out which side is the, the, the actual, like, uh, I guess like the whole tube basically. And then which side is just the screw. Um, and I don't think, like, I've had no issues with, uh, like dealing with the Loctite in the factory. It's definitely not permanent. It looks red, but it's not like I can undo it with my hand. So it's clear. It's obviously not red Loctite. I haven't had to heat anything up. But um, it will take a little bit of torque. You don't want to strip these screws, though. So be careful about that. Um, I would recommend, you know, good, like, good bits and a good driver. Um, I use the Weeha, the stubby bit, for... I, I have to get another one. I have to get another bit. But I, what I have been doing on tools like this, uh, like, this is really easy, like, because it's, like, uh, it's not, like, a long drive. So you can just hold it really, like, next to it, hold it in place, and then, like, turn the other one. Um... So 
definitely have good seal bits like Weha bits or um, I think the security bits I have are called Vega bits on Amazon. I think I should probably just link all this stuff in there. And um, I'm trying to find on my... Okay, these, yeah, this is where it is. So those, so kind of a hold, you just gotta hold one and turn it because that's really Chicago screw works. You have to hold one side and then keep turning the other side. Uh, and then I guess you could Loctite everything. I haven't locked in any of these yet. Uh, I should probably, um, but for now it seems okay. Uh, I, if I was doing, I was taking apart a knife, obviously I would definitely Loctite it because I can't stand like the blade play and shit. There is not much blade play, but there will be blade play on some of these, just the way Leatherman is. Um, if it locks all the way out like this, it's just how it's supposed to be pretty much. They just they usually just do that. Um, sometimes in the middle, sometimes not. Uh, but that, and then if you're going to do a rebar style tool, like with those, um, I would go like this. So find which one fits, right? And the one on the back is what's going to be holding it. But you kind of want to stagger them so then you can like if i was going to turn to the left right to loosen it i'd hold here and then push like this so because if they're if they're like exactly right it's kind of hard to do that so if you have like a staggered thing you can you have like leverage to pull down and push that way to loosen it it may be initially be really tight but once you like kind of break the glue or whatever is in there then it, it's, it turns really easily um so that is my advice for taking apart the tools, um, you know, tweezers. And then also, if you are going to have a deal with the blades, I would say definitely tape the blades, like masking tape. Uh, it doesn't leave any residue. On the black oxide, it does, like, make it look weird. But, I mean, it's whatever. And this is going to wear off anyway. The coating on black oxide wears off very easily. Like, right here, it's already coming off. So, um, definitely tape the blades so you don't cut yourself uh and then uh, the thing i was going to say actually i remember about the the shoulder screws i think i have one here yeah I, okay so i have a shoulder screw here shoulder screw um i'm referring to the screw that goes in here that actually holds like the tools in um, so you have two kinds you have like you have these one which is for the the knife like the outer tools, which as you can see, uh, is just com completely cylindrical, I'm pretty sure. Looks like it. Um, so you just, you know, that's pretty easy. But with the ones that are inside the tool, these are D-shaped. Not sure. See that? Yeah, these are D-shaped. So when you are turning the screw in here, right? Uh, so since it's D-shaped, like you see, right, like there's points where there's resistance. So like right here, it's not gonna be really easy to turn, like, or that just also applies when you're taking it out. So you have all the tools in, if it's like turned this, like, let's see. So if it's turned this way, right, it's kind of hitting, the flat part's hitting it, so it won't, it won't push out very easily. So you turn it and then it's going to be, it's going to feel a little tight. And then once you get that, like the flat part aligned with the top or whatever, uh, I'm, I'm going to actually just demonstrate it, I guess, correctly. Where is my other security bit, man? Oh, here. Okay. So, say, you know, I want to put some tools in here. Uh, I guess we can, for demonstration's sake. I actually didn't expect to be doing this in the video, but whatever, right? Um, I have a bit driver here. Where is a bit driver? Large bit driver. Oh, actually, no, I put it back in the other thing. Okay, well, um, I think this is like about the width. Should should fit. 
yeah let's just hope this fits anyway so you're gonna have the shoulder piece here okay here so this is on a wave for instance right so you know you put this on and then if you want say you're gonna start from this side right with the screw so you want to line everything up which is obviously like two tools it's not hard to line there's no wash you don't have to worry about it so you put it in and then so you turn and then, so it's in right so you see how like it doesn't turn like very easily like like a normal cylindrical screw you kind of have there's like a little point of resistance where you have to overcome and it's it's very stiff and then right when you're back when the flat part's on top then it's you know loose again so when you're taking it apart when it's loose like that you can just push it back through to put it in. but if it's like this you can't really push it it's very stiff so just be aware when you're taking it apart or putting it back together to keep your the top of it like this so if it's feeling stiff try to turn it and then you'll feel like kind of like it'll give um like you turn it turn it and then it gives like that that means that it the d part like the flat part is on top you can just easily push it out and everything will come out so yeah that's how i would do that um what i was talking about when i was taking apart the a wave style tool i would just like you know hold one side like this obviously i'm unscrewing the side that's the screw so i know like this is like the this is the side with just like the not this part but the actual uh small security bit screw this thing right here yeah obviously it helps to have a magnetic driver as well you hold it and then you just turn it it's pretty easy um it obviously definitely helps you like vice grips i don't have like a like, actual like, table clamp or anything um but yeah that's how that's how you would do that um but yeah and then also having things like this like plastic organization and stuff definitely helps definitely definitely helps put everything in there um yeah so those are all the tips I can think of and and everything I can do off the top of my head for the video. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty long video. Sorry about that. I will, you know, put chapters and timestamps and stuff. Uh, I, I, I can link everything. I don't know. I'll, I'll link like the tools. I'll link if you want me to link the actual Leathermans, like I can, but I have to get like a URL shortener and I want to do like affiliate links. So then you guys can support the channel and I get, I get kickback bro. And it doesn't cost you anymore. So it's like win-win for everyone. I have to figure that out. But, um, anyway, thank you for watching. I will be doing flashlight videos in the future. Uh, I just bought a bunch of flashlights. I got flashlights, I got lanterns, I got a bunch of stuff. Um, not too experienced on how to do like, uh, of course like beam shot videos and stuff, but I have, I have a, definitely a lot of lights I would like to show. I think are cool so um thank you for watching and uh, i hope this taught you something and also that like you know my my mods are cool to you like, let me know in the comments like any mod ideas or what you liked what you want to do i was thinking i was like if i could maybe do like commissions for people but i don't know if i'm advanced i'm definitely not advanced enough because with this kind of thing could be like you know anything basically the sky's the limit with this stuff so some stuff i can't do but um yeah, so thank you for watching and have a good one.